Foot Clan, we have a great episode today. We reflect on all of the rookie performances across every position. What was the truth about them? And and bigger questions about dynasty leagues and who would you trade for who and who do you buy into now uh, on the little bit of sample size that we have on these players. So make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the video. And the youth is youth. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, February 17th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast at the FF Ballers on Twitter. If you want to follow us over there, Mike, you look like you're. I'm a man. seeing. I'm seeing that this is, is a show twelve oh six. Yeah, we, we put the number. So one thousand two hundred and six shows. That means that we just passed show twelve hundred. Right. I don't think we're using those benchmarks anymore. We aren't. Not for like like big parties. Yeah. Well, no, I don't want a big party, but I just want to. You know, acknowledge yeah, well. that you've rounded a corner, but like, it's like uh, not even a corner anymore. Twelve hundred? No, now it fifteen hundred by uh, yeah. five hundreds. Absolutely, yeah. really. Oh, Eventually, 100%. it will be thousands once you hit uh, ten thousand. Yep. Yeah. See, we we're in perfect huh. agreement over here. Unwritten rules of show numbers. I did ten thousands a ways away. I guess I missed that meeting. We'll we, get there. We can't hit ten thousand. We can absolutely hit ten thousand. We've done this for seven years, and we're at one thousand two hundred and six. Oof, we will probably two, not. You hadn't to, put that together. Um, okay. two days. I I, I read you loud. Oh and clear. no, <laughs> ten ten a week. Two in August. days. <laughs> don't so, don't tempt the foot. Clans. Kyle, do, do do the math on how long it would take us to get to show ten thousand. Yeah, that's number one priority. I want to know how many years we need to do this to get to show ten thousand. Okay, I and how foot, old will be when we don't do put the show. that. Don't put that part, please. Don't put that part. Um. One thing I didn't, you know, we've got a rookie review on today's show, by the way. We're going to go talk through all the rookies at all the positions. And uh, this will be fun because a lot of dynasty implications for these players. You know, long careers ahead of them. People invested rookie picks and they want to know, you know, some players you know you hit. But others you you think you might have missed. And, sure. And, and did you or did you not? But I didn't get the rundown. And I this is my fault, Foot Clan, for not pursuing this line of thinking on Tuesday's show. But I didn't really get the Super Bowl food rundown from you guys. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Now we're so talking. I'm just kind of curious because you, you've said before that any Super Bowl party can have many things, but it must have pizza. So let me see if that box was checked. The centerpiece of uh, food was pizza. Okay. Pizza was there. I uh, had wings. Mm -hmm. Spaghetti. Both. And both. Both kinds, boneless and uh, bone and, and nugget and nuggets, which yeah, um, <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, the, really? Just yeah. for no yeah. reason? Just throw it in? No, in there. No, because it's delicious. Okay. Uh, we had also meatballs, just separate, totally different. You know, the yeah, Swedish the, style. totally different. Uh, dessert pizzas. You Got to get the dessert okay. pizzas. A little cinnamon. Um, what am I missing here? Probably a lot of things. Did uh, no barbecue? No, no barbecue. It was the little uh, the little. The little wieners? Oh, yeah. The uh, bacon-wrapped dates. There actually weren't little wieners in there. Oh, I thought was them, dates. I thought there was a pigs in a blanket situation no. as well. No, that would have been. See, Kyle did some loose math that anybody could have done. Mm. Which is, <laughs> Does you that know, mean it's just a guess? Yeah, well, he just said if we did 1,006 years, 60 years of this show isn't happening. We knew that math. He wanted a date. Well, actually, I was looking for the lazy math, but really, you didn't... give me a date now. All right. Well, um, also, I could definitely do this for sixty more years. Yeah, he thinks we'll be dead. Well, that's uh, I'll be in. The but machine. he doesn't know how technology is about. Mike will be in the machine. Yes. He said. Yeah, which means that I can easily hit that. His avatar will be producing shows in sixty years from now. So, Mike, did you uh, do anything different for food, or were you over no, at his there. place? Oh, I was okay. over there You're by like the second in the food? quarter. Okay. It was a weird Super Bowl day. Uh, we just got a few pies. I had the, my parents and blueberries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, there was a peach banana. pie at the park. <laughs> there banana was a cream. peach pie. But what was funny is we just got like three large pizzas, right? And then pepperoni and cheese. And then I got a large pizza that's the uh, olive oil pizza, right? 
There's oh, not yeah, tomato okay. sauce. It's yeah. olive oil. It's good. And then I put I, like it. I put like roast beef and uh, you put tomato sauce on it or beef and uh, bacon on it. And my oh. wife made fun of this pizza. No, I'm sure that's delightful. And she said, you know, why get a whole pizza this way? She says, it was the hit. Yeah, mm. it was the number one. First pizza. one gone. It was the number one pizza. So, don't underestimate it. It's pretty good. No, I'm, I'm with but it. But I think it really was the meat that held that up. There's it wasn't no the wrong way of- to pizza. Pizza. <laughs> that's what I've learned over life. Here's a quick question for today's show. What is Cam Akers' outlook for 2022? Did Man. so you that face says that the Super Bowl had an impact on you. It wasn't it's not just the Super Bowl. That was the that was the uh the 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 big reveal at the end of a really bad playoff run. I did the quick dirty math. Okay. Uh and Kyle math we call that. Go yes. On. And this was not lack of opportunity for Mr. Cam Akers, but throughout no. the playoffs. And look, yards per carry, certainly not the end-all, be-all of, of stats, but it is definitely somewhere you can start. And two and a half yards per carry. He looked smaller he last was. night than he's ever looked. I mean, he had a couple. I mean, at this, uh, for the Super when Bowl. He, since coming back, he, had, he did have a couple, like, impact angry runs where, I mean, he took Buda Baker out of a game, and I can't – He I feel like he hit somebody else and – it was like, man, that was a really strong collision. But you can't – you cannot – if this is how an offense is going and someone's giving you two and a half yards per carry, you can't keep giving them 15-plus touches on the ground. Like, eventually that they will move away from that player. What I think Rams fans would be quick to mention that the offensive line really didn't play that, sure. well. And play he's, that well. And he's just back from yeah. the – like by all accounts, I feel like he should not have been back medically cleared to play off of the Achilles injury, but he he was not helping the team. When you give the a player twenty four attempts and it turns into forty eight rushing yards, that is not Is that the playoff run? That no, that was the game against Tampa. Thirteen for twenty one in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean that's it, I, it, it's so a question it, just to so answer the question then, how do you feel about we're very worried. Very, uh, I'm worried about the player, not worried about the opportunity. It, it seems like McVeigh really does want him to be the guy, and is seeing enough at practice that they're going to still make him the, the 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 focal point of the offense when it comes to running the ball. But this is going to be a long off season of Cam Akers working him his way back into the player we thought that the Rams had drafted because this that was not that player. Yeah, I I do think he will be better than he was in the playoff run. When he in fact when he kind of first got back, he looked like man, he's he's still got the juice. He got back to it and then as the playoffs stretched on, he seemingly got worse and worse. And I don't know if that's just a matter of, you know, he he had a really horrific uh running back injury that he came back from in short order and so you know, that's got to take your toll on a human body. But now having a full offseason, he's only 22 years old. So this is a young, talented running back. I am a little bit rosier, but I do and have... Henderson is under contract next year on a cheap deal. Yeah, I, I do have worries that he'll never get back to being the player he was. I was, you know, he, I, I went into last year with him in my top five at running back. I was very bullish on him. Um, and then the and then the injury seemed like it could be a career ender. I I feel like he will probably be around running back fifteen for me if I had to guess going forward. Now I expect Andrew Whitworth will retire and walk away as a Super Bowl champ on top of the world at his age. They I believe he I don't know how retirement works salary cap wise, but he's only got a dead cap of like a little over one million this year for his contract. So I think Whitworth won't be back. That's not going to be helpful for the running game. But the like what it will come down to one I have no idea what his ADP will be. I think that people will be excited and they'll take him, you know, third, fourth round, and just the, the, my snap judgment at this point, which is very early, is that that is going to be a pick that is outrageously fantastic or just devastatingly bad. It won't be a well. He kind of returned value. I think he will swing one way or one extreme or the other. Yeah, I think if you don't read too much into trying to evaluate the play when he's breaking all the rules coming off the Achilles and you look at team and opportunity, there's reasons to be optimistic. The age, yes, the roster, the head coach, you know, Sonny Michelle will be gone and um 
yeah, I think it'll be – it's one of those bets on all the peripherals mixed with the player that you saw coming out of college hoping he gets back to it. Yep. Uh, reminder, you can uh, hop into the UDK Plus right now, ultimatedraftkit.com, and if you pick it up at the lowest possible price, we give you a discount for pre-ordering it, and you can do that before March 10th and get a shot at a listener league spot. Woohoo! Play with us. And uh, uh, we did not win the Listener League. One of the three of us did not win it this year. And uh, the winner's been chirping. And I don't like yeah. it. So uh, you can win a spot to play with us in the Listener League, ultimatedraftkit.com. Find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Let's talk rookies. Rookie review. All right, we are looking at all the positions, all the rookies, see which ones were impressive. We're calling, uh, you know, helped you out. Helped your fantasy football roster out in year one, the impressive rookies. Oh, yes. They get a round of applause. The people love it. Uh, they, and then we've got a, a category, ho-hum, just okay. Not great, not disappointing, just did the job. Okay. And then we've got the minimal Fantasy impact, disappointing, uh, not so good. Well, better luck next year. <laughs> <laughs> also known as the quarterbacks. Oh, man. oh that is yeah. true. There are no impressive fantasy rookie quarterbacks. Fantasy, yes. Like you can say, oh, Mac Jones, what a legitimately great rookie season. Not for fantasy. Correct. Yeah, and, and I don't know that, you know, he's going to have to take. No Justin Herbert this year. No, nobody who really got off to even, you know, a lot of times rookies, they will not be great for fantasy, but they will at least show you the path towards next year's greatness. Really? You, do, you feel like there wasn't a player that showed you the path? Is well, this we, a Lance? No. Oh. Is this a Mac? What? No. Is this a Fields? This is Justin Fields. No, I, I didn't feel that. No. Yeah, I, I, don't, he I showed, don't think so either. He showed momentary flashes of... Maybe he can do it, but you would have as many to point to for Zach Wilson as you would for Justin Fields. Yeah, I mean, there I I absolutely. was absolutely when I look Let's... at my expectations coming into last year on Justin Fields and what he did, he definitely disappointed from what I believed he was going to be. Justin Fields finished with four out of four of his final five games. He was a top ten fantasy quarterback. Zach Wilson was a top ten fantasy quarterback twice. Now, that is a very fine line, mm -hmm. number 10 and three of those four, but he did. It does sound good coming out it of your mouth. It does sound good when you say it like that, but also the first half of the year was horrific and terrible and awful. And so, like I said, he showed flashes. He yeah, did. But, but you, could, you also have to appropriately tell the story of the beginning of the year. He didn't start in week one. Number two wasn't even a full game. Like They weren't – What about where, three, four, five, six, and seven? Right, but <laughs> – but, Zach Wilson was the starter from day one. He was drafted to be the starter. Justin Fields over training camp was not the starter. It was Andy Dalton, and then and then it was let's pick up the pieces and try and figure out how to to get this offense let, moving with Fields. Let me ask it this way, Mike, because I know we were all three pretty bullish on Fields as a as a prospect coming yes. in. Yes, would you say he met your expectations this year? You you think he did? I think, or would or did he disappoint you? I would say, yeah. I, yeah. He disappointed. Mm -hmm. He disappointed. But my question that I had asked was, you don't see the path moving forward. And I 100% see that for what Fields was able to do t uh, after the very, very terrible start. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys have no, it. No, I, 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 like, I like digging in. Now, the question goes forward. Obviously, it's a little too early to know weapons, right? Allen Robinson, I think the world presumes he will be gone. I don't think he did enough don't care. and had the relationship with the Bears to be back, and probably addition by subtraction considering what he was. Darnell Mooney can grow, but my point is without without Allen Robinson, you really don't have a passing core here. I mean, Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney, you might like them for what they are, but that's not a, that's not a good enough receiving Agreed. core as a for an NFL franchise to set a quarterback up for, you know, that leap into year two. I can agree with that, but that to me is a, a foundation. Like if you add another you, I, I think if you make one kind of splashy move, whether it's in the draft with a first or a second round pick or it would have to be this year. 
Yeah, or or somehow you get like Calvin Ridley or uh, the the free agents of but the that's wide receiver. End of it's, list. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough this year, but I think that the the foundation is there that it wouldn't take a a complete overhaul to get things going in the right direction. Well, let's just get spicy early on here then. All right. Because I wasn't expecting that discussion. It doesn't really matter what order we have these guys in. There were no excellent fantasy rookie quarterbacks. There was one okay. It was Mac Jones. Consistency rank at 21, QB 18 finish, uh, 22 touchdowns, 13 picks. It was a it was an impressive year leading the offense. Didn't do much for fantasy purposes, and we talked about him in the QB Truth episode, the second one. But it's simple. I mean, are you taking Mac Jones in a dynasty league, or are you taking Justin Fields in a dynasty league? Justin Fields, easily. Great question. Because it has to be factored in a dynasty. Does the guy have a... Like, I feel like Mac Jones answered the question of, is he the future quarterback for the next 10 years? for this franchise. I think the answer is going to be a definitive yes. I think yeah. he answered it better than Justin answered it. The ceiling won't, is clearly... Won't argue with okay. that. The ceiling... So this is the way I look at these two players, and this is a, a fantasy football philosophy of how you play, especially in Dynasty. The ceiling is definitely higher for Justin Fields because of his mobility, rushing touchdown, rushing, rushing yardage. If they both hit, there's no Mac won't be able to do for fantasy what Justin Fields can do. But Mac seems like a pretty surefire prospect as of this moment to at least put out a David Carr or David Carr, oh, a Derek <laughs> Carr esque career, a Matt Ryan esque career, where you're going to have plenty of fantasy relevance, not glory, but a lot of important fantasy relevance for dynasty leagues. That makes a huge deal and a long, long time. I expect him to play ten years. Whereas Justin Fields showed some flashes, but he's the type of quarterback that three years from now could be out of the league. And so we, I lean towards the Mac Jones side because if I had to really bet whether four years from now Justin Fields is a starter, I think I would bet against it. The hard part is is we've had some rookies in recent history that don't look like rookies. I mean, Justin Herbert was an example. Yes. Mac Jones, I think, was an example this year. Uh, and then we have several in the disappointing fantasy-wise group for today that look like rookies through the whole year. And Trevor Lawrence looked like a rookie through the whole year. I think Justin Fields did too. Decision making, that evolution. I don't know how much was, you know, Matt Nagy's fault, right? We, if we like Justin Fields, we'll make all those excuses for him. If we don't like him, we'll use them against him. Um, but that begs the question because this is. Look, I asked you about Mac Jones and asked you about Justin Fields. That situation. So there are probably leagues, dynasty leagues. You, if you're side with Mike, you could go swap Mac Fields for Justin or Mac Jones for Justin Fields. Oh, and I would do that immediately. But then the question gets teased out with a couple other names, right? Where you say, "Are you a Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence? Are you a Justin Fields or Zach Wilson?" With what you saw this year, Lawrence, just to give you um, the numbers, finished at QB twenty two, thirty fifth most consistent. It was not a good year for for him. He had 12 touchdowns. I know rookies, 17 don't, throw, picks. rookies <laughs> yeah. don't throw a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, that's fine. That's... I, don't, I don't expect him to go out and throw for 35 or have a Justin Herbert. His 12 passing <sighs> touchdowns and 214 yards per game were the lowest ever for a quarterback with 600 attempts. So he, he played the whole year, gave you 0% great games, one good game this whole season, busted most of the time. And then Zach Wilson, look, he, he did – some of what Fields did at the end of the year. He gave a couple of impressive fantasy performances, number six overall in week 13, number four overall in week 16, mostly busted, like Lawrence. Um, he had seven picks in the first three games, only threw four more the rest of the season. But this was not a prolific season, finished at QB 30. So in a dynasty, again, you can go swap, right? You've If you've got Trevor Lawrence and you've got Zach Wilson, are you going to swap them for Fields? Zach Wilson, I would swap for Fields immediately. Trevor Lawrence is man. That's that's far more difficult. Of the some 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 guys when they come into the league, the adjustment is very very difficult. It clearly was a difficult thing for Trevor Lawrence, and it was compounded by like that year with Urban. And everything that was happening on a weekly basis, it felt like there was some sort of scandal involving that team. Like that must have been a that had to be a, a very tough work environment on top of Urban Meyer should not have been a 
head coach in the NFL to begin with. So I'm not bailing on Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I would – ah, man. If you could turn Fields into Lawrence, I, I don't think I would. I think I would just stick it out with – fields yeah i i have major i love that they made a coaching change and that they brought someone in who has taken a rookie quarterback up and yada 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 i'm not burying trevor lawrence as in he can't be good but he didn't do anything he didn't ever right. pass the eyeball test he, he always looked he was inaccurate outmatched he, outmatched i mean outgunned he was just he was <laughs> <Outclassed>. terrible <laughs> he was he was terrible so but he's got the biggest name he's got the highest yeah. draft capital you can have um, if I could go and trade Trevor Lawrence to someone who believes for a Trey Lance who didn't play, I would do that without well, – I would trade, Interesting. I would so trade you Trevor would, Lawrence for Trey Lance in, in a heartbeat. So as of now heading into year two of this rookie crop, you have Trey Lance at the top. Yeah, Trey Lance okay. would be my number one. He's got the rushing mobility. He's going to have the actual full-time job with a good team with weapons like Debo and – Kittle and Ayuk. There, there's a that's a good topic to bring up with these rookies because if you think about the path, what's the path for Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson? The path is you need a year in between this last season and fantasy greatness. At least one year. Sure. You need at least one year where he's flashing and doing the Herbert rookie season stuff. So then at best case, maybe you have a really relevant player probably in two years. Mm -hmm. Whereas you look at Trey Lance and you say, okay, well, we haven't seen him on the field and he can flame out. But if he doesn't, it's kind of a – it's baked in that he'll be a top 10 running or yes. <laughs> running quarterback. Um, so I think it's interesting. I, I think I like Wilson more than Lawrence. I think that the – Ooh. I think that the franchise and the weapons and some of what Zach Wilson – is held against him in this rookie season is, I mean, this was a player under fire at every moment in terms of the offensive line was a humongous issue for this team. Um, and he probably tried to do too much, but I wish that Lawrence had tried a few more times sure. to do too much. And I wish I would have got to see, you know, a play that I said, wow, that arm is, you know, that blew me away or that decision-making or that evasiveness. I didn't see a lot of that from Lawrence and yeah. Wilson. I like the, I like the organizational situation for him better. Elijah Moore, um, you'll have Corey Davis for another year. You're going to have some weapons in the draft. I, I guess I just like it a little bit more. It's going to say Wilson at least has Elijah Moore, and like those two can grow together. And I, I think I've seen enough from Elijah Moore to know, yep, that dude has it. Can he be elite? That remains to be seen. But he can be uh, one of the better wide receivers in the league. The Jaguars. I don't know who that is, and then and like Wilson still has Michael Carter. I don't think Michael Carter is an elite running back, but he's good. Like you have some some pieces that you can build on uh, for this team, and you had even back when Josh Allen's rookie year, it was like I mean forever ago. But fantasy, he came on at the end where like he had these huge games because he was running, uh, throwing the ball was it was rough. But at least several times throughout the year, you saw Josh Allen make a throw, and you go, "Holy crap!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't know if I can uh, list a handful of quarterbacks in the league right now that can make that type of a throw. Where we just you didn't see that flash play from Lawrence. Yeah, and it it, it needs to be remembered by fans and players that there's also the middle ground outcome for a lot of these players. There's the Mariota Winston um, not they never ascend to top 10 greatness. But they're and, just their starter good. But they're, they're starter good or they their starter okay I mean Mariota was okay for fantasy at times. Oh, yeah. He flames out after his first contract. He's to back up the rest of his career and for dynasty players those outcomes aren't very good either. Right. right? I mean if if Justin Fields is fantasy okay and flames out or Trey Lance does that, that's the risk. That's that's kind of the, the that's path. That's why you might that, like Mac Jones. That's exactly – that's the path I see for Fields. I hope that he turns more Russell Wilson um, than he does Mariota, but I think he'll have a couple fantasy-relevant years and might not get to that next contract. I just wrote down because I, I hadn't really taken this exercise – myself and I thinking through these guys what would my dynasty order be of these five quarterbacks personally I would have Trey Lance number one Mac Jones two 
Justin Fields three, Trevor Lawrence four, and Zach Wilson five. I am okay. in the identical list, but I'd flip flop Lawrence and Zach Wilson. Lawrence to the bottom. Which is, I mean, maybe that's. Yeah, no. I, well, he deserves it based on his play. Yeah, work your way up, buddy. Yeah. And I would be Lance Fields, probably Mac. Lawrence Wilson. Yeah, I might have Lawrence ahead of Mac of just ceiling. Like when you're throwing out, well, Mac Jones can be Derek Carr. Derek Carr has never finished higher than quarterback 13. Like we have Derek Carr on our dynasty squad, and it's cool having him be like, oh, we got a backup option. I don't know that we've started Derek Carr once. That's in, fair. In a two-quarterback league, sure, more, more valuable. But in a single-quarterback league, we've had Derek Carr on that team for three years, and I don't think he's started a single game for us. Yeah, the hope is more Matt Ryan than Derek Carr. Yes, if, if you're talking Matt Ryan, then yeah, because Matt Ryan has had a couple years where he was, a, he was fantasy dominant. Carr just has never done that. We might even see uh, round two pick Kyle Trask next year. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah although, baby. Although, although the rumor mill in Tampa, first of all, did, have you seen this? No. So first they talked about, like, they're still they're still here. heavily attempting to get Tom Brady to come back. And that, you know, the way that it's being reported is that is not a 0%. Yeah. Nice. Like, getting Tom Brady back for next year, we may have things to talk about this offseason. But if not, I wouldn't bet on Trask being their quarterback. Come it on. seems much more likely that they are going to be in the Russell Wilson street sweepstakes. They're going to be in a bigger really? court. Yes, absolutely. Come on. That they're going to to be make because they know what everybody else knows except for Jason, which is that <laughs> you might need somebody other than Kyle Trask to get you back to a Super Bowl. Well, it's to me looking at the team like even if you bring Russell Wilson in, I, is it is it better for them at this moment if they don't get Brady back to just just burn it to the ground? Not in their mind. And rebuild. Well, I. Yeah, well, because I don't, you know, Bruce is long oh, in the Bruce, tooth. Bruce is out. Bru Bruce is long in the tooth, and if they're going to come back, they're going to be in it for the championship. So I wouldn't be surprised. Trades, um, you know, some of these bigger veteran free agency moves. Tampa's going to be a target for that, and they have a winning culture. People like playing for Bruce Arians. If he sure. sticks around, you may, you know, you you throw. We we look at the team opportunity chart in the dynasty pass, and we say. Tampa's got a lot. Yes, they do. But it's just you, you turn a couple dials. Chris Godwin returns. Okay. They bring him back. And then, Fournette returns. And, and you then, bring and then you grab a free agent and all of a sudden it's like yeah. Carson Wentz, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, right. Bruce Arians Gross. and Carson Wentz. That's like oil and water. Yeah, that's not working. That would not work. Uh anybody I mean, from the Trey Lance perspective, I don't know how much we need to talk about right now. There's not a lot of performance to evaluate. He didn't play much. 71 total pass attempts on a year is a tough – it's tough for me to sit here and say, okay, yeah, maybe it's a disappointment, but that's mostly because he didn't get to play. Mm -hmm. He play, He played two games at 100% of the snaps. Uh, week 17 was against Houston, so an inferior team, but he was the quarterback 10. He was a holding call away from uh, a top, a a top, top five guy. In Arizona, uh, he was quarterback 20, and it was like – it's weird when you can pinpoint like one, one play, and uh, where like where he got stonewalled on uh, fourth and short at the goal line. If he gets in on that rushing touchdown, he's a quarterback. The one biggest of the, week. the biggest conversational thing, in my opinion, with Trey Lance is the simple fact that he didn't win the job, that he wasn't ready. Because mm -hmm. I don't think there's any doubt that if he was, Kyle Shanahan would have tried to win a Super Bowl with Trey Lance. You know what's funny is. Bef we we talk about all the the wrong beat reporters and the lies out of San Francisco <laughs> and everything, but going back, thinking about how they came out and said right off the bat, from the get go, never wavered that they want to sit Trey Lance for a year and keep Jimmy G and have Jimmy G be this guy and let Trey Lance train behind him. Maybe, maybe they were just telling the truth because it's exactly what happened. Maybe I was, that was they wanted him to sit for the year, but. I mean, obviously, he didn't go out and just dominate practices so much that they he his he forced the hand. But um, from the get go, they they did say like that's what they wanted. They wanted the Patrick Mahomes comp of sit, learn, come next year stronger. For football purposes, this that was the one hundred percent better thing to do. I mean, Trey Lance, the the actual moving all of those trade assets to go up and get Trey Lance at number three overall was 
that was risky business based off of like his production profile. I mean, he was essentially a starter for what North Dakota for like a year. He's that's a, he's that's his experience. To have him ranked that high in dynasty is still a tremendous risk. Yes, sure. Um, because draft capital, the draft capital everything. is there. Yeah, it's but it's not. It doesn't make you draft capital guarantees starts. That's what it does. Right. And if he starts and he's as mobile as he is, then that that should comes. guarantee fantasy points. But right. neither of those guarantee a long term starter. Correct. Correct. Um, looking at the running back position for 2021, there were um. A couple of impressive rookies, really one to me. I'm going to disagree with the organization of this group. Um, I think Najee Harris is obviously the runaway. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about him in the Truth Show, RB4 finish, fourth in consistency, 1,200 yards, 300-plus opportunities, mm -hmm. caught a million passes. The story of Najee Harris' rookie season is success. It was a success. Yes. Javante is um, classified as impressive for. I don't, I'm only arguing with that because of the fact he was infrequently or occasionally relevant and good for fantasy starts. He was impressive with the eyeballs, and he, and we know what the future is going to be. I mean, running back seventeen. Yeah, that's a pretty strong finish. Yeah, but I mean, but know what he felt like? He felt like his consistency rank, which was 31. Sure. That's the reality of the fantasy story for him. So um, playing in every game will get you to 17. It's just I don't know how much he helped, I, I, how many championship teams Javante Williams was on. No, he wasn't a he wasn't a difference maker for fantasy rosters this year. That's true. But certainly a, a super impressive rookie year. When it comes to the talent, what he showed he is capable of doing on the NFL field, um, and going forward, depending on how the backfield shakes out there, wowzers. I mean, he he um, he will he could be someone that sneaks into the first round, depending on what happens with the with the running. Sure. If they if they dedicate you know the job to him, um, people might get hot and bothered with. Him. They will for sure. Yeah, rightly or wrongly, and then and then, um, I I do think Elijah Mitchell belongs in the impressive category as well. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell, um, is not a player we got to talk about in the truth episode, and I want to give him his time. I will say this though: when you look at the potential for Javante, and let's say Melvin Gordon's gone, which is 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 possible, you look at Najee and you look at Javante, and you have to ask yourself where they're going to go in redraft and in dynasty startup drafts. Because it's hard to argue with an RB4 finish for Najee Harris. Mm -hmm. But then you somehow are tantalized with the explosiveness, with the tackle breaking, with the kind of, um, I don't know, maybe more exciting skill set of Javante Williams in the sense that like Najee is kind of the hammer. But Javante is the thunder and the lightning in yes, a way. He is. And Najee had 74 receptions on 94 targets. That is going to get destroyed without Big Ben there. I can't imagine that he gets another ninety. I I'd be surprised if he gets the seventy targets on the you know the reception total in targets when you bring in someone like a Dwayne Haskins or well, they, Mason Rudolph. Funny or enough, a rookie. Both, both of these teams that would be leading contenders if Aaron Rodgers becomes available. Javante had 53 targets for 43 receptions too, which if you give him full time work, that will be at the Javante. That is, could be at the Najee level from last he year. Is great. He is great. I agree, and so that's a real tough question. I like, agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could probably, in a lot of leagues, go ship Najee for Javante plus. Oh, for sure. So I'm just saying, like, depending on your convictions of what you saw. You want to play with some fire, but you may get more out of it. You may get a great wide receiver and uh, Javante. I would be willing to do that if I knew Melvin Gordon was gone, but I don't think it's a 0% chance that just next year he's in a timeshare again. You can't like, do it before because you know Melvin lives yeah, to destroy you. Yeah. He would come back just to ruin your fantasy team. <sighs> Agreed. Pro bono. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah Mitchell was the RB25. Consistency rake of 18. He was the RB25 in 11 games. So, really, let's pay attention to that consistency, those performances. I mean, the, 
The thing that was so impressive about him is that he had earned enough of the trust and respect of the team that anytime he was active, they just wanted to give him every carry. I mean, week one, week one of the season, this was like, you're ready to go. You're the dude. You were drafted behind the guy we traded up for. Um, well, Mostert was the dude. Sh and sure. Then, and then he went down immediately. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying they made him the starter from the get-go and they stuck with him. Um, and he was he ahead looked, of Trey Sermon, obviously. Yes. Yeah, they, he looked so great. Explosive, fast, fit the scheme well, um, but could not handle that workload physically. I mean, I know injuries, we, we don't ever want to label someone as injury prone because they usually aren't. Um, injuries are far flukier, but man, three different times. He like it's it's a it, like if you miss the same amount of games he missed with an injury, it feels a lot better than missing the games he missed from three separate injuries. Where it's like, man, this guy can't stay on the field when you give him the ball twenty five times. Yeah, injuries were a huge problem, and projecting their backfield, which now has six different rushing leaders in six years for San Francisco, that's going to be the challenge going into next year. And the variable of Trey Lance taking over which means functionally the offense, you know, Shanahan, he's not an idiot. He's going to build an offense that accentuates the strengths of the quarterback he right. has. That could be advantageous for Elijah Mitchell, like it was for Alfred Morris when Robert Griffin was running the football. But it could go the other direction. They could bring somebody else in. You could see, you could see Elijah show up in training camp and maybe not and maybe give the Dante Pettis effort, and all of a sudden Trey Sermon's the guy. It, there's just some variables when you have a player that um, was a six-round draft pick as your leading rusher mixed with the injuries where it's like, okay, what would they have wanted to do with this offense if Raheem Mostert was healthy? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I kind of go back to a, a thought process, a strategy over the last several years that has generically worked out for me, which is – Certain backfields. No brand names. Right. Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but the Patriots backfield, there's a lot of value there. Uh -huh. the, the Niners backfield, there's a lot of value there. But I don't trust either. And it's really worked out pretty well over the years because they don't always care who it is. And, you know, it's it, it, different guys at different times. You know, here it seemed different because it was just injury that took him out. It wasn't like game planning for someone else, but I don't well, this, know, this man. It sounds Those... like a lot of cold water on a situation where a player played very well. I have a hard time trusting. Like, going into next year, will I trust that Elijah Mitchell is the dude for 17 games? I, I probably won't. What about what about week one? Absolutely. Okay. I think if you, if you think he's the guy in week one, then you make the bet on him. Sure, and then trade. Or do you ship him off after this year in Dynasty? I call it the Philip Lindsay effect. Right. Go get some value. I think he's the guy. <laughs> like, I mean, this is the point where we're in the point of uh, uh, point of Dynasty where you are making uninformed or, or not. I should say you don't have all. You the don't information. have the draft information. You just can follow some some uh, some tea leaves, follow some breadcrumbs, and that's. That's how you get huge wins, though, also in your Dynasty League, is when you take the gamble of that Elijah Mitchell, I think he's going to be the guy. I don't think they're going to draft a replacement for him. And you go get him while his value is is low right now because those other things exist. If you're you really, have a huge win. If you're really, really good at football, we have seen evidence that that is enough to get you back out on the field. I mean, sure. we, we spent an offseason doubting – James Robinson, and then they tried to work Carlos Hyde in, and eventually talent just won the day, right? I mean, talent got him back out. So if Elijah is great, then the draft capital, the ambiguity, all those things aren't going to be barriers for him. Uh, it's just a risk. It's a tremendous risk heading into the year. And yeah, he got hurt three times, but then they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're willing to hurt you a fourth. Like, go out there and take 30 more carries. And lucky for him, it's not just it's not just Eliza Mitchell. It's every single running Liza. back. Eliza. <laughs> every you, single uh, running back for the 49ers just gets hurt. Yeah, they um, them in Baltimore have practice field yes. issues. Okay, running back. So those were the three applause-worthy running backs. Let's get to the okay running backs. Michael Carter. Fourth round pick, finished at RB twenty nine. 
seven percent great games, thirty six percent good. Missed some time with injury as well. Um, joined Saquon, Hines, Cohen, and McCaffrey as the only rookie running backs over the last fourteen years to have multiple eight plus recep reception games. Earned, you know, he, he followed kind of the rookie model of playing time increase, trust increase over the course of the year. They had a lot of running backs in the mix in New York. Sure. I don't know that I view Michael Carter very positively. I, I certainly think he can be, but uh, when you look at his, his season, he he had his most impressive stretch right in the middle of the year, week 7 through 10, and week 7 through 10 is when Mike White was the quarterback for this team. That was when he was dumping the ball off, left, right, and center, and all of a sudden, you know, those those stats of, you know, had a lot of reception games. Well, yeah, those all came with not Zach Wilson. Um, he had one good game with Zach Wilson uh, the second half of the year. Um, so it's just one of those where I I pumped the brakes a little bit. Now, Tevin Coleman is... He'll be gone. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I do think that the arrow's pointing up from this season for Michael Carter. It's only going to be better, and he showed enough flashes of what he could do. But I don't want to just look at the game log as all the same when so much of the value came without Zach Wilson. Yeah. And I, I'm not that optimistic either. I mean, for, for a player of that size, I don't think he's ever going to hit the carry totals. That's going to make him, you know, he's going to have a ceiling that is going to make him a very difficult pick. And maybe that'll make me underestimate him. Maybe that'll make him a receiving back that, that deserves more attention than he gets. But I don't think there's a future where Michael Carter is Austin Eckler. I agree with that, but I think that, Michael Carter can be a top 20 guy. What about the round man to touchdown? Ramondre Stevenson. Fourth round pick. Had some huge games. Great running offense. The round mound of touchdown. You okay, like it? I love it's, it. It's not <laughs> bad. It's an homage to Sir Charles. Yeah, yeah. His name is Ramondre almost. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, man. The round mound of touchdown. Yeah. Done. First nickname of 2022. It's a long one. Uh, since 2013, here are the rookie running backs with multiple games of 100-plus yards and two rushing touchdowns. Gurley, Zeke, Jacobs, Jeremy Hill. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor and Ramondre Stevens. He was super impressive. Uh, very well-rounded running back. I think <laughs> eye test. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. The eye test, um, I wasn't expecting this from him, I'll be honest, coming in. I think Damian Harris is a better between the tackles runner than Ramondre is, but they, when he was on the field, they did have something else in the offense that Damian Harris couldn't bring. And, um, you know, he's Damian Harris is in the last year of his contract. So there is a, there's a path for Ramondre. Like I like him a lot more than Carter. Yeah. yeah, me, yeah, me yeah. Too, and there's right? a path for him being the guy. If he earns the trust of this, this coaching staff. Yeah. I, I think, uh, Ramondre Stevenson is very, very talented, uh, the fact that he can actually catch the ball while being a goal line back, I mean, that's kind of what you're hoping for for fantasy. Those are the two most valuable uh, situations for fantasy football is are you going to catch the ball and do you get touchdown opportunities? I think he has um, the rare skill set to really, truly be both of those. Now, next year, it's still Damian Harris. He's he's under contract. He was the more explosive back between the two. I think he was the better runner on the ground, and I don't expect anything to change. Tons but, of touchdowns. But long term, you know, this is uh, – that was this was his rookie year. So you're talking two years from – two years from now, I think he could be the dude, and I think he would be really, really valuable for fantasy. And in the meantime, while you wait for that to happen, he's not irrelevant. No, he's he'll get a, drives. Yeah, so uh, I – he was one of the first – end of the season dynasty targets on my radar. Yeah, I like it. Um, I really – he showed a lot of flashes, and, and we just talked about Mac Jones. The, the offense should get better and improve and move forward and Mac Jones get better. I mean, that's not a guarantee always, was it Baker Mike, Mayfield. Was it Michael Turner and uh, Tevin Coleman yes. in Atlanta together? Oh, no. no. Michael, they were never together? Michael Turner was with LaDainian Who was with Col who, who was it Tevin was Coleman with? It was Freeman. It was with Freeman. Yeah. I'm sorry. So – that is my only worry about this situation for Mondrick in redraft leagues is that he's too good. You're always waiting. He's too good to not be a, a handcuff, like a, like a pure end-of-season backup. But he's not good enough to be a regular starter or somebody that you can count on when Damian Harris is healthy. Yeah, yeah they've, they've got him cheap. So, I mean, Harris got hurt multiple times, and, and that made Ramondre 
impactful. In the disappointing running back category for rookies, ETN due to injury, yeah. first round pick. I want to talk about him in a minute, but Trey Sermon was the biggest disappointment. Third round draft pick by the 49ers. Whoops. I took him in the first round of our dynasty startup at, the, at the back of the first round. Thankfully, I took Elijah Mitchell in the third. I mean, if I just did those, you mean in the rookie order, draft, not yeah, the, the startup? Yeah, right? sorry, yeah. in the in the rookie draft, um, I would have felt great about it. Um, you have between zero and two future running backs right now. That is that is right. Thank you. Um, so he was the biggest disappointment. I would say, you know, Chuba Hubbard in the fourth round got tons of playing time and showed you that you should probably trade him to whoever has Christian McCaffrey like now. Yes. And then Kenneth Gainwell didn't really make an impact. He was the strangest, I mm -hmm. think, of like I liked him coming out. His production profile was awesome. You want to talk about a guy who showed flashes yeah, too? He, he really did. He looked good on the field. He had a couple of really good games, including a rushing touchdown in week 1. Like it looked like it was going to be Miles Sanders and Kenny Gainwell. Like Boston Scott was not part of this game plan. Then Jordan Howard. And then just and then when it got to the point where oh well Kenny Gainwell is the obvious person to step up here because Miles Sanders is missing time that's what it was no we're in fact going to bench him it was let me, let me put it let me put it this season. way let me put it this way he only had five games this whole season where he got thirty five percent of the snaps okay five for five RB ones every single time that he was over thirty five percent snap thirty five percent this is not a this is not a huge barrier. Who are you talking here. about? Uh, you, mean top, you mean a top 24? Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Top, top 24. Top, top, okay, 24 okay. top 12 would be yes, way more that would impressive. Be in, that would be incredible. Um, but he was top 12, three of those five. I mean, he was right. He, he was still great. But my point is, like, when he was given the opportunity, he looked great. Yes. So going forward, I... You're optimistic? I then? am optimistic. Gainwell for, or Michael Carter? Oh, Gainwell, for me, personally. I, I believe more in what the Eagles offense can do going forward than I do in the Jets. Let me make life hard on you. Travis Etienne was a first-round draft pick. He'll be returning. He got more time to recover than Anyone. a lot of players get for an injury of that nature. Are you more confident dynasty-wise in the yet-to-be-seen, yet-first-round draft pick, Travis Etienne? You're going Cam Akers, aren't you? No, oh, but okay. let's mix him in there. All right, Or Cam Akers or Elijah Mitchell. Okay, I was going Elijah fun. Mitchell. Because right. we're talking about these rookies. Oh, that's funny. But, I mean, you, you look at a player that was proven and established, but ETN, the path is there. I mean, you have James Robinson with an Achilles injury. You have a new head coach, one that we all like. Oh, I forgot about Robinson's Achilles. Yeah, and you have yeah, Doug, Doug Peterson now. ETN. So I feel like ETN is a player that you could go – he may be the guy to go shop Elijah Mitchell for. Yeah, yeah, I, I – I... I think I would put ETN. But you do have to wince when you do it. Yeah, I mean, all three of these guys have giant question marks. Uh, the right answer could very easily be Cam Akers here, where if uh, n another year removed from the injury or the recovery time and the better offense for sure. It's between those two guys. I would put Mitchell third for me. Let's jump into rookie wide receivers. The impressive rookie wide receivers. <laughs> Jamar Chase. Mm. Jalen Waddle and yes. Amon Ross St. Brown. Jamar Chase, I mean, what needs to be said? He just literally. He's good. He proved anybody and everybody wrong that would ever have said this team should have spent something else on this pick. I mean, you can say what you want about how bad the offensive line is for Cincinnati. It doesn't matter. The, so what? Who cares? The, Jamar Chase makes every single play a potentially – Home run play yeah. for Joe Burrow. Every time they snap the ball, there is a legitimate chance at a touchdown because of Jamar Chase. How, how good was he in the Super Bowl, too? I mean, those catches, the one, even the swing pass that ended mm -hmm. up being a rush for him, he just like palmed the ball and ran down the field. Where so, was this guy in the preseason when he couldn't catch a football? I don't know. That's, um, that's a funny thing to think about. So, finished at wide receiver five. We talked about him extensively on the Truth Show. So, if you want a bigger Jamar Chase breakdown, that's where you look. The, on the Rookie Review Show, yeah, he's great. Jalen yeah, Waddle yeah. finished at wide receiver 16. I think he impressed a lot of people this year. Um, again, you have a head coaching change in Miami. But this past year, 141 targets, 104 catches, over 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. Trade for Waddle. 
I mean, if you McDaniel, everything out of his mouth is Waddle. He is going to build an offense that runs through Jalen Waddle, and so long as his body can keep up with it, which he did this year. I mean, Jalen Waddle should be a fantasy star. <laughs> you were one hundred percent accurate in the coach of the Dolphins, but my brain thought you. We have a McDaniel and a McDaniels that got mm -hmm. hired. Single yes. and plural. Okay, so the single. That's right. Yeah, um, unmarried. I don't. I don't know if he is married or not. But that's <laughs> that's it. one way to look at it. Yeah, I, they I'll vet that. They, Hold on. They I will. do add an S to your name once you're married. That mm -hmm. is how that works. Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I I agree with you. I mean he he's just going to be integral to the offense for as long as he's playing football. I think because he needs to be. But what's his ceiling? Is he a top ten? Potential? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, he's he's going to get just an out of control amount of volume that he he got this year. I mean, like once once they made that transition, you know, from week six through thirteen, he was wide receiver three, and that's a that's a long span in a foot in in a football season. Do we have a breaking news? Breaking news. What do we got? Mike McDaniel is married. Oh, oh yeah, that was big. that was the breaking yeah. news. Yes, I feel like was. we just oh okay, yeah, Rob big. just lost a little bit of credibility. Yeah, well, oh, yes, for sure, that was that was a credibility killer. Uh, continue. Uh, I say, and if you look, uh, I, we were just having this discussion, Jay. You were like, okay, well, when you think of slot wide receivers, who do you think of? And it's well, you know, Welker, either the the Brady guys, and you know who the wide receiver coach is now for Jalen Waddle, Wes Welker. So I mean he's just he has a lot of arrows pointing up when it comes to coaches and how they have had su previous success. Yeah, and he's going to catch the deep ball too. He's yes, not, and he's, he, going yes, to, he's also extremely fast. He's going to be doing what Ty Hilton does out of the yeah. slot sometimes. Uh, let's go to the playoff king. <laughs> Amon Ra, Saint Brown, who also is throwing the football by Jared Goff, but. Finished at wide receiver 21, into the very uh, last part of the season absolutely on fire. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I, I brought it up earlier. He's a fourth-round draft pick. Yeah, it's very difficult. The eye test to me is this is a good, not great player that caught a bunch of touchdowns at the end of the season and is still attached to, I think, what we would consider to be a questionable offense mm -hmm. with – uncertainty at the quarterback position for the future. So I don't know, you know, if I had to, if you had to make me bet something, I don't think it's going to be what you got from week 13 on the rest of his career, but he certainly proved himself over a long enough period of time to be relevant. I feel so genuinely disrespectful to <laughs> Amon Ross Amber. I cannot get myself to believe I really can't, and it's not, it's unfair to him. You can't ask him to do more than he did on the field to prove it to you. He was given an opportunity. He dominated. He was great. He won people championships, the playoff king. I just don't believe it. And maybe, full disclosure, self-evaluation here, this is Brandon Ayuk fears of in his rookie season where he broke out and a lot of that came when Debo was gone and when uh, Kittle was gone. And then you look at Amon Ross St. Brown, well, DeAndre Swift and his targets were gone. TJ Hawkinson was gone. That's when the real breakout happened for Amon Ross St. Brown. I just don't know that he has the physical tool set, the offense to really be a dominator. He could. And I'll feel silly because I, I feel bad. There were a couple of weeks in the playoffs where I would recommend player X or player Y over Amon Ra, mm -hmm. even though he was heating up, he was on fire. and Wrong call. Um, so I feel like I should not double down on this. But it's just how I. It's just kind of how I feel. So I'm happy to hear you say that. So no, I'm, I'm in the same place. I just. I don't want to. I don't want to be wrong on it, Mike. Do you love Amon Ra? Are you in? I am in that he's. I think he's good and, like, for where you got him in your rookie draft, you should be, very happy that you took the plunge on him. I do believe that the Lions are in a strong position this year to, in the draft, go make another splash. Make, make a splash. Yeah. I mean at. Do they believe in the quarterbacks in this draft class? Because then you take you could take a quarterback too. The old uh, uh, the Bengals take your quarterback in the, in the first round, and very early second round you take a top level wide receiver, and you just 
jumpstart your offense, and like that's something that could happen. And then that just knocks the, him down a yes. peg. Yeah, I, at least Al believed and put him in there in the playoffs. Oh man, championship and winner ended up. Oh, I hear Al groaning Wait, back there. Is that yeah, he that, didn't? That's a painful one. I'm sorry, he did not put him in. What if you did? I would have a trophy. Mm, man, that Honestly, feels bad. <laughs> thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> the butterfly effect of that would have been interesting because you would have beat me. Yep. And then you would have won a title. And then I wouldn't have felt the pain of losing a title in the championship game. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I like I like following these. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I really how much less. I also valuable. would have saved about thirty bucks of printing up a canvas print of uh <laughs> Of the that, interception? Of the interception by Ian Book that beat you. That's what, what I was going to ask was the, how much less valuable that print is to you now that you did not win the championship. Mm. All right. Well, and Amon then, Ra. And then Al's wife wouldn't have left him for losing at fantasy. Uh, people yeah. are just going to need to make their call on Amon Ra and see whether or not they believe. I think, I think you're talking about probably a decent wide receiver, too, going forward. Maybe a Robert Woods style of value going forward, which is has a definite place. I just don't see superstardom. Devontae Smith, first round pick. It was it an okay or a disappointing <laughs> year for Devontae Smith? I have a definitive disappointing. I have a definitive okay. That's funny. Okay. Mine? Yeah. I am definitely <laughs> disappointed and okay that I'm disappointed. <laughs> no, I, it was for a rookie to go out with Jalen Hurts who is not a – doesn't oh, put up, Give all the qualifiers. Well, no, but I'm saying there's not a prolific uh, amount of passing yards to go around, and he still ended with over 900 yards and five touchdowns. Just like the, What killed you was 64 receptions on the year. Yeah. When he wasn't there, he destroyed you. You want to know a playoff run from week 12? 75th. 68th, 51st, 11th, 49th, 58th. Yeah, it went I really mean, you bad. compare you compare that Which, to that's when Jalen Hurts was hurt. Look, we got we've got plenty of excuses for all the reasons Amon Ross St. Brown could have been bad in the playoff run. I'm not I look, I think Devontae Smith's a great talent. I think he will be in the future, but I would call this a disappointing year. For a first round draft pick, when you hold him up against his peers. Sure. And you look at Jalen Waddle's rookie yep. season and Jamar Chase's rookie season and Amon Ra in the fourth round. To me, this is a disappointing season because I never knew when I could play Devontae Smith ever. That That is fair. It's not like there aren't other players in the NFL that on any given week could give you an explosive performance. I mean, that's a realistic thing. But you'd been better off you know, with a lot of other guys this year. And that that's coming from experience. And maybe that's too much. Maybe that's coming from too much of that. But... um this was a year where he did have some good performances, specifically week nine and ten. But I didn't know when to play him. Agreed. And so I'm going to give I'm going to give him the disappointing, so that he has a bigger leap next year. Hmm, yeah, we're doing right? him a favor. I'm doing him yeah. a favor. Now Jason was definitively okay. Yeah, I think he did have an okay season. I I I mean, twenty nine percent good games. Yeah, when I when I, I guess look, standards are different among different people. Well, I mean, this is not just a matter of what is the truth of his 2021 season, right? This is a rookie review looking forward. And to me, 900 yards in your rookie season, five touchdowns is a really, really solid rookie outing. Obviously, it wasn't Waddle. Obviously, it wasn't Jamar Chase. So he didn't set the world on fire. And I don't know if standards are, are skewed or changed by that. It's hard but, when your standard I mean, is breaking the all-time record. I think we're having two different discussions because there are no reviews looking forward. There is a review <laughs> of the past, which <laughs> is what we're saying. I'm saying on this past season, my review would be disappointing. Now, the, the question about the future is a great one, which is do you believe he is a – like you look at redraft leagues, Jason. Is he a wide receiver two or better next season? Because that means you're locking him in your lineup every week. One hundred percent, I believe he is a wide receiver two or better next year. He over the last decade he had the fifteenth most receiving yards for a rookie. The list of guys ahead of him are pretty much universal studs for fantasy football, with the exception of Kelvin Benjamin. I mean, it, I I just I I think his. And that's a review of, of what he did last year. Was it consistent? 
No. You for fantasy on a week by week basis of whether or not he helped you consistently win games, that could be a disappointment. But his season as a recap was a really solid rookie season because coming into this year, the questions were not the questions about Devontae Smith were can he even handle the NFL field? Sure. He's an itty bitty skinny little twig that can't handle you shouldn't draft him oh, you shouldn't no, no 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 that He's was the detractors pick in the NFL no, no, no. Draft I'm saying that he won the highs no Mike you know what I'm saying yes. the detractors were all saying you you and I all three of us I think were huge I love Devonta Smith coming in I, I didn't have any questions Those questions were real and out there I, I didn't have any questions but the, there were certainly a lot of detractors saying that he couldn't Handle and regular. They might have been worried. They might have been worried about it. And yes. I, and he proved that no, he he belongs. He can beat defenders. He can handle press coverage. He can do those things. Still a rookie. Still with uh, Jalen Hurts. I think. I okay. Future's bright. I think that Elijah Moore had a more impressive rookie season than Devontae Smith. And I know it was a smaller sample, but I that's what I believe. I you, when you end the year, the Devontae Smith ended the year poorly from week eleven on. The end of Elijah Moore's season was a stretch run of borderline dominance for yes. you know, and it seemed repeatable and it seemed prescriptive, and so I think Elijah Moore is a, he's also attached to a quarterback that's going to throw the ball more than Jalen Hurts is going to throw the ball, so I have a great deal of excitement for Elijah Moore's future with Zach Wilson in New York. What do you guys think? I agree, and I I think in redraft as of right now I would probably take more over Smith would you go Smith Jay I would go Smith but I really like both players okay. I, I mean what you saw Elijah Moore do and, and this was what you hoped when obviously when the Jets drafted him he was an explosive athlete you saw it on the field where you get him the ball and he can make stuff happen it, it really was Andy you, I mean it's the only word to use it was dominance um from weeks 9 through 13 he was I think like the wide receiver two. He was just absolutely on fire, and that was his rookie season with a rookie quarterback. So Arrow is pointing up. I don't have any problem someone saying they would rather have Elijah Moore over Devonta Smith. That that's that's a, a legit debate. I'm on the Devonta Smith side, but Moore belongs there. He deserved it. He was awesome. Not even 22 years old yet. Uh, other rookies in the disappointing category. Kadarius Tony. Well, I mean, better luck next year. <laughs> He's, I was impressed with him it's so for absurd. a very small amount of time. But the the impression of a game where you go 10 for 189. That's hard to do. You could have hit 200, but then you made a boneheaded mistake and tried to punch somebody and you got kicked off the field. And now you already have rumblings from uh, the underground that Kadarius Tony could be a trade away candidate this year already i have not heard that yeah they're they're you got to get your ear to the ground it's still wow. low is it, it this is in the bushes or somewhere else? no this is underground we have not this is beneath the bushes yeah subterranean this is in the dirt yeah wow look at once it, it sprouts i'll let you know okay I'll then the bush you know. will grow <laughs> did you guys see this stat uh in this upcoming 2022 season the giants have the most cap space devoted to the wide receiver position in the nfl because of galladay and a first round pick in Kadarius tony yep well, in the story this whole offseason with the, the all the head coaching candidates was they all want to be there with Daniel Jones. So if if it's the final shot. Yeah. Rashad Bateman? Yeah, TBD. That's a tough one. Disappointing rookie season for sure. Showed enough flashes, flashes to, to where he's a quality player. It's... Bateman or Tony? Dynasty. Tony. Really? Mm. I think that would be a non-consensus pick. Yeah, I, I think I would be perhaps in the, the minority side, there. Yeah. Um, to me, the reason why is because I don't think Bateman, personally, I don't think Bateman will be better than the third target in the offense. I think it's Andrews and Hollywood first, and Bateman is a really good you know, uh, third option, whereas Kadarius Tony, he's competing with a broken Sterling yeah, Shepard and Kenny Galladay and nothing. Yeah, I think Bateman will make the jump past Hollywood next season. Right, that is that's the differential. That is the differential. Um, Rondell Moore, second round pick. D. Eskridge, second round pick. Tutu Atwell. Any more tough ones for me? <laughs> Terrace Marshall. <laughs> that one's the most oh, disappointing. That sound you just heard was Kyle's heart shattering into a thousand pieces. Yeah, it was not a fart. Yeah, Kyle loved him even more than I did. I I really did like Terrace Marshall. 
drafted him in the second the round. The Panthers they, liked him too. They needed him. They could have used him, and I, I don't know what happened. I I can't. I I don't understand it. But um, he must not be good. <laughs> I mean, this it's is very hard to overcome. Sam Darnold. Cert well, yeah, but I was going to say certain rookie seasons too. Like when you don't get yeah. flashes. Like Joshua Palmer, I like a lot more than Terrace Marshall. Mm -hmm. I think Joshua Palmer is yes. a baller. I think he's going to be a great NFL pro. Now, whether that means a top 24 receiver, that's going to depend on the depth chart. But I think he's one of those players that like if he can Mike, make the leap if Mike Williams is gone. He, he's he's suddenly very interesting. Mike Williams, we you know we, I, I've been we've we've said a couple times how bad this wide the receiver free agent, free agent yeah. class is. Mike Williams is kind of the bell of the ball, assuming that Devontae so Adams he could is get franchised, overpaid. and you know because of the ACL injury with Godwin, yeah, he could get overpaid to go somewhere. Um, and then if that the happens, Giants. Joshua Palmer is a really nice asset. Uh, other names that you want to bring up? We didn't get to see much of Diami Brown. I mean, Des Fitzpatrick. I remember talking about him. Yeah, I mean, the the only guys that I think are worth even the, mentioning their names. Super Bowl are, champion Ben Skoronek? Uh No. <laughs> uh, but Diami Brown from mm -hmm. the Manders and Nico Collins from the Texans. Both of them, I saw I saw a spark. Just a little, little spark. Don't bury him. Yes, okay. yes. Rookie tight ends, there was one. Two. Impressive. Two impressive. How dare you? Two impressive. Uh, well... Okay. Two super impressive. Two impressive tight ends. Kyle Pitts, we talked about on the Truth Show. The future is very bright. Yeah, he's okay. And then Pat Fryer Muth. Yeah! The Muth is Muth, baby! 25% great games, or good games. Um, Realistically, though... <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, the, yeah. once, once, once we move past the wonderful nickname and the jokes, I really, really and do believe great, it was a great season. I really believe he is a hyper talented tight end. I think his future is bright, except for the quarterback. He is not a Kyle Pitts level dominator. The I mean, nobody is. Kyle Pitts is a freak of nature. He just doesn't have the nickname. Like we need to give him something. Like the Pitts is the best the that's the problem is this yeah name is when pits. you say you're like it's the pits yeah and that's that's a pretty tough rebrand to get that from right. oh it's the pits 100 percent negative to he's trying trying it on for size in the positive uh, yeah just to just to see oh, oh man, man that's the pits oh, that's the pits yo no <laughs> yeah. don't oh, work yeah. um oh. <laughs> but but the 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 you know Pat Fryermuth is not going to ever be the centerpiece of an offense the way that Kyle Pitts can be. So without a great quarterback, Kyle Pitts can still get the yardage. Pat Fryermuth was in college and is in the NFL a touchdown machine. Yes. You get inside the red zone, he's perfect. He reads defense as well. He catches the ball. Fryermuth or Cole Komet in Dynasty? I would take Fryermuth. I'm going to bet Ooh, on that's a talent. Really, I, I'll take Fryermuth as well. Because he, he – look, we, we Jason brings it up often. Rookie – tight ends yeah. that they're not supposed to be good yeah it can take and a this while. was a pretty impressive rookie season for you know 60 for 497 and 7 yeah mm -hmm. that's solid that's nice yeah and Mason is that the end Roo of the is Mason that the rudolph as your quarterback they can't do that right that would be like a practical joke on themselves i don't know they're gonna i know this i know that they will try to not do that <laughs> i don't know that they're gonna be able to not do that but i know they'll try carson wentz I would, I would take I would Wentz be, over if, Mason Rudolph. If Wentz was there, I'd be thrilled for for Pat Fryermuth. No, it makes sense. I mean, he was tied with Mark Andrews for the most red zone targets amongst all tight ends. That is what he's known for. And that, I don't think a new quarterback – that's going to be part of the offensive plan around the goal line for years to come with Pat mm -hmm. Fryermuth. But the problem is you know for sure that, you know, like let's say it is Mason Rudolph. What's the cap on passing touchdowns? 22? Like if it's There's a an great extra year? week now, so I'll oh, go okay, 23. so twenty three, twenty three. Yeah, that's, that's like the, the pits. That's man. the <laughs> that's the pit of, <laughs> the pinnacle, and so um, then you divide those up amongst the whole receiving core, and it's bad. But if they can get a good quarterback, if they were able to get Jimmy Garoppolo, who, who's not the greatest, but at least Jimmy could go and he's competent. Yeah, he's competent. Or obviously, if Aaron Rodgers comes to town, hallelujah. Um, I, I do think he's very talented and will score a large portion of their receiving touchdowns. It's just a matter of how big is that pie. That's a good point. Two names I'll throw out amongst the rest of the tight ends, which were all disappointing. But I'll throw Hunter Long's name out there. Don't forget about him. He was one of the best collegiate tight ends um, in 
all of college football at Boston College. And then you have uh, – I'll throw Brevin Jordan's name yeah, out there. That's the name I was going to bring up. In Houston because I think he will potentially carve out the pass-catching role there. Uh, Gasicki's a free agent in terms of the situation for Hunter Long. I don't think Gasicki comes back. Yeah, I mean, and Hunter Long – I mean, they drafted him in the third round. So there's the – and a new head coach. There, there could be some offensive changes. McDaniel wants a tight end that can block. <laughs> so he doesn't want right. Gasicki. Yeah, there you go. So Brevin Jordan also made some plays, and he is a pass catcher. He's an athlete. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. That is. All right. That'll do it for today's show. UltimateDraftKit.com if you want to get in on the pre-order bonuses. Bonus. Otherwise, we will be back with you next week with the 10 Things to Remember episode, one of our favorite of the year, and some mailbag. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.